Hello, everyone, and welcome to Believe in the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Jeff Cavanaugh from 97.1 The Freak, which you can listen to in DFW on the radio, 2 to 6 p.m. Show names The Speakeasy with Mike Reiner, Julie Dobbs, and Michael Gruber. And if you're outside the listening area, you can use the iHeartRadio app. This is my co-host who has a hat that I cannot decipher. His name is Jesse Holly. He's a former Cowboys wide receiver. You might remember against San Francisco when he got caught, but they did win the game because of this. Oh, Jesse Holly went 77 yards. It must be a reality show. You can make fun of my geography in a second. We're brought to you by our friends at Bet Online, the number one source for all your betting needs. Bet on Will Greer. I can't believe you guys didn't. If you didn't, get the latest odds, lines, matchup reports for all the different sports, baseball and boxing and golf and all the things. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting, your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Get to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Hi, Jesse. What's up, bro? <laughs> I mean, we got stuff to talk about. We got Trey Lance. We got <laughs> Will Greer. We got, man, Dak better hurry up and sign an extension at a discount because he's got somebody nipping at his heels now. Hi, Jesse. Well, I mean, why sign an extension? Just just quit and go do BLC. Just go do that. Is Dak the best offensive coordinator in football? It's a, good it's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Well, sample size. But Trey Lance reactions from Jesse Holly. Fourth round pick traded for Trey Lance. Go. You know, I've been all over the place with this. And initially, I didn't like it. Like, what, like there's like three levels of like grieving, right? It's just like. Do them all because I have seven. Yeah. <laughs> I got seven things about this. Yeah. I mean, because at first I'm like, a fourth, and I knew, I knew when I heard a fourth, the Cowboys reached. Like I just knew it. When I heard, it, I was like fourth. I was like, man, they just they 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 reached. I'm like, I'm sure no one else is going out there giving up a fourth for a situation where people knew, you know, once the reports came out that he wasn't even going to be a backup. I was like, they reached. And come to find out, they did reach. Um, then I didn't understand it. Um, and then I was like, well, okay, then I do understand it. It's just been a mix of emotions. I, I've just, I just, I, to be honest with you, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I mean, this is a, you, you're into the draft, Jeff. You, I'm into the draft. You, you do great things with drafts and the draft shows and your draft coverage. And you, of, of all people, understand draft capital. And you understand the draft grades of what it takes to get a person the numbers and all that kind of stuff. Do you know how bad you have to be for a team within two years of giving up not one, not two, but three first round picks to move up to take you at the number three overall pick to get rid of you? Like usually they let you kind of play out your rookie deal don't don't sign the fifth year option and then see where it's at. But they just like, you know what? Misty Irrelevant beat you out. Sam Darnold beat you out. And Jimmy Garoppolo beat you out. So at this point in time, just go. Just go and we'll take whatever we can get for you. That, that's the part that I'm still hung up on in this whole Trey Lance thing is, is how bad is Trey Lance to have that much capital put to get him and then he's given away within two years for a fourth round pick. I have a theory for why it was a fourth round pick. I have a theory. My theory is and maybe you could have, strike like in the bottle twice and get two fourth round. No, picks. I think maybe you could have got them for a fifth round pick, but you didn't have one because they traded their next year's fifth round pick to move up to draft a guy that doesn't look very good at football right now. Um, in last year's draft. That's just a theory. My theory, because I I don't know. What was anybody else going to give up for him? I don't know. Like, the fact that you weren't outbid by a team that has a realistic, like, timeline to, oh, we're going to put his ass on the field. Tampa, where Baker's playing. Mm -hmm. um, 
Washington. I had another one. Who was the other one? I had another one that I kind of believed in. Like Dallas is the wrong spot, but he plays quarterback. Honestly, there's a chance, a chance. And I think all these, this is one of the 78 things that goes into this. <laughs> there is a chance that pick a football team that doesn't have a good backup, that their starter gets hurt. And you're able to flip a guy who never plays for you for something even better. Maybe. Um, the NFL generally holds on to what they thought of a guy in a draft for a while. It gets two years removed, but the Cowboys liked him. Two years removed, but you're going, oh, crap, a quarterback at a discount? And here's another thing. Here's number seven, number two, number five. If Dak got hurt in week one, who do you think goes in the game? Cooper Rush. Me too. I think it's Cooper Rush because they've seen him and he's been around and they've, they've seen it before. But I wonder if maybe sometimes they're smarter than I give them credit for. And I don't believe they are. Because um, it makes sense to go to what you know, especially considering that you got the results you wanted when he played. But maybe... They looked at those games they won with Cooper Rush, and they're like, wow, that was um, very fortunate to play lights-out defense, to have zero turnovers, and the number of penalties called on the defense on third downs because our quarterback was not going to convert third downs ever. Wasn't even going to try to if it was more than third and four. And maybe they actually looked at that and they're like, that's not sustainable. If we lose Dak, we need somebody who can actually make plays as, a, as opposed to, hey, just don't fall and drop the ball on the ground. Maybe. I don't know. But I think they would put Cooper Rush in. And so that part's weird. And so maybe they traded a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance to be the backup quarterback a year from now and then throw in all the fun factors of he plays quarterback, where if he's my backup next year, and because he's been my backup, when he hits the open market, it's not like he would have a, a big market. Maybe I could extend him for four or five million dollars a year, like a good, decent little backup. And then what if he is next? What if we can strike gold again for a team? Because here's the thing about Jerry Jones. Here's thing number 11. This thing about Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones never wants to be bad enough to get a good quarterback, ever. I agree. He won't do it. Not, and so they've good had to. Not good, not good for the 9.2 Billy. They've had to stumble into an undrafted free agent in Romo that turned out to be very good, and they've had to take a shot on what they were hoping was their long-term backup in Dak, and it turned out, whoops, he can play. And maybe they're trying to stumble again. Well, I know that that's got to be part of it. Part of it is the twinkle in your eye, the idea that what if three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten years from now, that's the dude. And he just hasn't had a chance to get the experience because he kept getting hurt and he needs time. So I get it. I totally, 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 totally get it. But that's like six of my 14 things that are just scatterbrained. Um, so back to you. No, I, I, I think we're all in that same sphere is that there, there's this range of emotions, right? And we're all trying to piece this thing together because you know, you have this, and some, not everybody, they they have this belief and this, I mean, strong belief that Dak Prescott is the guy from here on out. And to be honest with you, Dak has set himself up for a no-doubt extension. So for those of you that think this is a, a play on extension and, and it's not. Okay, go ahead. I want to call a timeout on you. I agree with you. From Dak's perspective, this means literally nothing. He has two years left on his deal. Next year, he's a $60 million cap hit. Do they want to take that? Probably not. Uh, in theory, could no they trade? Tag and no trade clause on his on his uh, his contract. Don't forget Correct. that. So Correct. Even if you try to trade him. He can't be franchised. Um, I mean, I guess if he agreed to a trade, uh, which would be doable if he found the team he wanted to go to and they were going to give him all the monies to make him not want to go to free agency, that's fine. Um, so is trading him impossible after this season? It's not impossible. Cutting him is, um, getting him to agree to an extension when you have one year left and he's about to be an unrestricted free agent who can't be tagged. 
boy, you're going to blow his doors off now. So like nothing has changed with Dak. Dak doesn't give half a crap that you added Trey Lance. He might be minorly annoyed because he liked Will Greer. I don't know, but he's also the perfect sports leader. So it doesn't matter. He'll be great to Trey Lance. They'll be lovely. They'll be best of friends. Um, He doesn't care. Do I believe that the Joneses think that part of this, a little part, could be we're going to get Dak to pay attention now, hop to and and agree to a contract that we want. Do I think that they think that? <laughs> oh, yes. Because I'll take you back to 2019. In 2019, when Zeke went to Cabo, the Joneses were on the record over and over and over. We'll see him when he gets here. We ain't paying him nothing. Matter of fact, we're open for business. Who wants to come do business that it's time for an extension? And they signed Jalen Smith to a contract extension Wait, to please. speak to Zeke. <laughs> to speak to Zeke. <laughs> who ignored it and waited for them to pay him, and they did. So, like, do I think that they think that way? Yes. Does Dak care and should Dak care? No. He's a top-10 quarterback with two years left on a deal that can't be franchise-tagged. He's sitting beautiful. He does not care about somebody's backup's backup that just arrived to back up Cooper Rush and maybe be second string. No, he doesn't care. But do I think that having that avenue of possibility plays into the Jones's mind? Yes. Some. Yeah, that's just a, that's just a weird way of thinking, especially from a front office that's historically lost in their abilities and their attempts to hard nose at the at contracts like they don't know they've lost right? they don't even they don't even know <laughs> like, like Dak, Dak's leg was hanging out of his skin and they had to give him everything he wanted because it's quarterback they you cannot you're not scaring Dak into being like I'll take another 40 million dollar contract no the price is 50 now the end like he ain't taking a discount for you because you traded for somebody who was going to back up Sam Darnold or Brandon Allen and be inactive I don't know no they might think it. Yeah, I just if anything, if anything, this pushes his price tag up even more. Because now I'm thinking if I'm back, I'm saying, oh, so maybe this is your long-term plan. So let me get every red nickel up out of you <laughs> when I head back to this con. Like before I thought about maybe because I, you know, some other, but now, you know, you, you know, you didn't call me, you didn't you didn't give me heads up. And, and that's another thing, right? Like do, do you know? Do you call Dak? Do you not call Dak? And I get that deals have to be done in a timely fashion, and 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 that matters in the grand scheme of things. But twenty four hours goes by, and you don't give Dak a phone call. That that to me would piss me off a little bit. Maybe, maybe you don't give me a phone call right in the immediate right dealing of things. Things are happening. Phone calls are being made back and forth. You're on the, you're on the line. And I know that sometimes even in de- doing those deals, it's like, yo, you got 30 minutes. Yo, you got 15 minutes. Hey, I got four of the teams on the line. Hey, so-and-so is calling. Boop, boop, boop. You know, you're, you're making these phone calls. But 24 hours goes by, 26 hours, 30 hours goes by, and you still don't have enough decency to be like, hey, Dak, before it hits the news, I want to let you know here's what happened. We were in the mix of doing things. And – we traded for Trey Lance. Nothing, you know, nothing against you. We we're just trying to do some things that, you know, hopefully give ourselves the, the, the best way to be a most talented team that we possibly can. That part, I would be a little bit annoyed if I was Dak Prescott. And that also will come into account when I come back to the table again after this year, because you're not going to let me go into the final year paying me $60 million a year. You're going to find it. That's just too much of a cap hit. You're going to find a way to get this thing down. So you're going to give me the things that I actually want, but I'm also going to tax you now because I see the way that you play and let this be a, and let this be a lesson. Let this be a lesson. Let this be a lesson to all the people who watch football, to all the players that will one day play football. If you're a young fan that watches believe in the Cowboys, but Jeff Cavanaugh, Jesse Holly, you're in college, whatever. This is not family. Football is business. The, your last name is not Jones. I was talking to Shaw. I was talking to Shaw at practice. Shaw Jones, the grandson of Jerry Jones, at practice the other day. You're not him. You're not. You're not. You're not an heir to the throne. <laughs> you. What are, about the fun baby? What about her? Who? The fun baby. Oh, That's, don't worry about that. She gets a cut. Mm-hmm. She gets a cut. But you're not an heir to the throne. Okay. Your last name is not like the Joneses. You're a, you are a means to an end. And when your means no longer helps them get to the to the 9.2, you be, you become an end. So 
I think that'll piss Dak off a little bit as well, and he won't forget that when it comes to when it when it comes time back to uh, to get to the negotiating table. Okay, I do want to throw one thing out to you on Trey Lance, just because I think it's a fun nugget. Okay, Forty um, ers tried twice. He broke his finger or whatever the first year around where they wanted to be able to mix him in a little bit with Jimmy throughout the year and it didn't work out. Then they gave him the job and then he broke himself and it cost him that one too. And then they found new guys that could play quarterback. Right. Um, so they tried to, to get him in the mix both of his first two years. And now it was like, whoops, we found a guy that we like and we found another guy that we like, and you're just going to be watching how experienced Trey Lance is as a top three former pick is absolutely insane. In Trey Lance's college career, he threw 318 passes at North Dakota state. They had eight career starts, right? Uh, no, he had 12. I think he had 12 in 2019. Okay. I could be off on that, but I think he had 12 in 2019. Um, but in 2020 he played one game cause they had the COVID year mm. and then they played one and then they were going to push back the season. And he was like, right, I'm not playing in the spring or whatever. I'm going to get ready for the NFL draft. Thank you. Um, in the NFL in his two years, he has thrown 102 passes. Um, so his grand total of pass attempts in his entire college and NFL career is 389. <laughs> Dak missed five games last year and threw 394 passes. <laughs> He has thrown less than a starting NFL quarterback, way less than a starting NFL quarterback throws in a year in his college and NFL careers combined spanning five years. Trey Lance is a baby when it comes to what are you going to do in the NFL? And he might never get the shot, but that's the fun part. The fun part is people watched him and they thought, holy crap, he's going to be amazing. And he's barely played the position. Like he played one year at North Dakota State and was really, really good. And then he's never really gotten a chance to develop in any way, shape, or form. Anthony Richardson coming out of Florida, kind of same thing. Hadn't played a lot, hadn't thrown a lot, but the Colts are going to start him. And they're going to be like, let's see what you got. That's what Trey Lance was supposed to get and never did. So we have no idea. But the fun part is the what if. Like, what if everybody was right a couple years ago? And he's just never gotten a chance to get snaps or develop. But then that takes me back to with the Cowboys. We're about to start the season. You're not getting any snaps. You're going to watch Dak practice. But, but okay, so, and I hear what you're saying, right? There, there's the development part, right? And, and but if, if the traits are there, if the skill set are there, if the mental capacity is there, you don't give up on them on the Niners. I mean, like, Quarterbacks are hard to find in this league. Good quarterbacks are hard to find in this league, um, especially those who have talent physically, you know, the arm talent, the leg talent, and just uh, the finger in the fourth preseason game and then the ankle. If there's enough talent there, like even if you feel like, yo, you're not going to play, like even if you feel that way, if there's enough of the intangibles from a talent perspective, you got to hold on to that. You just no, have to. Yeah, hold yeah, to no, that. you're right. There's no doubt that Kyle Shanahan thinks he can't play. There's no doubt. Kyle Shanahan is telling you, I think he can't play. And not only is Kyle Shanahan saying that, so is John Lynch. And I'm not saying that Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are the, 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 the Bible of talent evaluation. I, I just think about a, 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 a a blunder like this costs head coaches and general managers jobs. Like you basically mortgage the future for a team. Now you figured out how to get a really damn good roster and you put really good players on that roster. It'll and probably catch up. It'll probably catch up in the next year or two. Cause that's three years of first round picks that you didn't have over time. It, that usually catches up. It just doesn't catch up immediately. It catches up when those first rounders are supposed to be your best players. That, that's just, two, three, four years from now. That That's my, uh, that's my biggest hiccup with this whole thing is I, I, you just, I mean, Jamarcus Russell got time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Well, Trey had bad luck. Some of that's bad luck. Once you got hurt, Brock Purdy just went, hello, I can play. And the 49ers went, holy crap. Yeah, but I don't think, I, if, if we just did talent for talent, right? I'm not talking about the system. I'm nah, talking it depends talent. what talent means. Careful here. It depends what talent means. I mean, arm talent, athleticism. 
I don't think Brock Purdy has a uh, has a better arm than Trey Lance. No, but do you not count literally reading a defense and accuracy now, as talent? Okay, okay, but that okay that, that that goes more to what I'm saying. That goes more to what I'm saying of if they don't believe in that, then what what will change in Dallas? Um, probably nothing. I think that what changes is if he had gone to uh, a team that he could have actually been QB two and QB one was a journeyman. And if that journeyman doesn't play well, he goes and plays like that's what could change it for Trey Lance is practicing every week and playing every week. And I don't know when he's going to get to do that. And on top of this, the one thing that we also have to kind of still play a little bit of, you know, devil advocate in Mike McCarthy's kind of on a one year deal himself. Yeah. So if this is a guy who likes you or who wants you in this point, like Jerry said, he didn't consult Mike McCarthy. He didn't consult anybody. He just went on and did his own thing. So, I mean, that's another that's a whole nother conversation that you bring in a guy in an offense and you don't even consult your head coach in it. I mean, I don't I don't I'm not a billionaire, I don't run a franchise. I think that's a little off as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care how good the deal is. There's like I don't care how good the deal is, there is enough time to pick up the phone and go, hey Mike, I'm thinking about trading for Trey Lance. What's up? Like, you know, you got 30 yeah. seconds, right? I mean, they're, hey, they're, they're, you remember this guy and do you think he can play? Right. Like, you know, you were, they were in the war room speaking two minutes before they, had, they went and drafted Mozzie Smith. There's enough time. They're, they're in the, they come in and say two minutes on the clock. They're like, we're just warming up. There's enough time to call by McCarthy and go, you got 30 seconds. What do you think of Trey Lance? I'm thinking about trading for him. And then we go on from there. But you don't consult Trey Lance. I mean, you don't consult Mike McCarthy. You don't give heads up, to, you know, to, to Brian Schottenheimer or Dak Prescott. It's one of those rogue picks that Jerry Jones is like, yeah, <laughs> one day it's going to come to fruition and I'm going to monitor it, but not monitor it, but monitor it. And I'm going to be the one if they go, look at there. Old Jerry didn't found enough. See, I don't, so overall, I don't love it and I don't hate it. I, I'm fine either way. Um, I think there is a decent chance that the guy that you're cutting today or tomorrow, Will Greer, I think there's a decent chance he's a better quarterback than Trey Lance is. Uh, but I understand that quarterback is a super valuable position. If you think there is a chance that something could be something, it makes all the sense in the world to hold on to it. If there's a chance that this year you'd be willing to put Lance into a game over uh, Cooper Rush, and he could play well, and you were willing to use his legs. If you got Trey Lance to play well for two or three games, and then Dak came back, you could trade Trey Lance for way more than you gave up for him. There's a chance that Trey Lance's contract could run up, could run out, and he could get paid enough by somebody else after being your backup that you could get a fourth or fifth round comp pick back. Like there's quarterback is so valuable that I get it. I have no problem just throwing dudes in the quarterback room and being like, hey, what if? Cool. I mean, fourth round pick. The tough part is Cowboys have been really good with their fourth round picks. <laughs> they should have traded a second round pick. They're worse with their second round picks than they're <laughs> with their fourth. Dak, and just since Dak, I tweeted out this morning, I don't have them all on the top of my head, but Dak, Pollard, Schultz, Ferguson, Biotish. Um, I'm missing somebody, but whatever. They pulled some dudes out of the fourth round. So at first I was like, fourth round pick, I don't care. And I went and looked at their fourth round picks. I'm like, damn. They're pretty good there. They suck in the second. They should have gave up a second round pick. <laughs> that logic doesn't work, does it? No, no. And they say, hey, we want a fourth round pick. You say, we're going to give you a second because that's where we suck. <laughs> we want to keep our fourth. We'll keep it on the Cowboy theme. Will Greer was informed before the final preseason game due to the Lance, uh, Trey Lance trade, that you will no longer be employed after, after this game by the Dallas Cowboys. Good luck, kiddo. Go out there. Oh, and by the way, you're going to go out there and your life is on the line. Your football life is on the line. And your starting quarterback will be the one calling your plays. You're, and he checked He checked out of the first play, by the way. <laughs> your, your, your thoughts on Will Greer, his play. Your thoughts on Dak Prescott, his play calling. Uh, I loved both. I mean, I think you got to see what a quarterback thinks you should do when they got down to the goal line. I think it was first and goal from like the two or three and Dak called a bootleg. Cause that's what Dak once called. We're not trying to ram it up in there. Call bootleg. It's an easy touchdown play action. Let's go touchdown. I think they were 11 of 15 on third and fourth down. And Jerry thought he should have ran it more on third and fourth down. And I'm like, that explains Jerry Jones. You <laughs> did what you should have done. It worked. And he still was like, we should have ran it. And it's just like, wow, you're insane. Uh, 
you don't know because in the preseason, especially the last one, they're not playing starters. They're not calling a bunch of exotic stuff. I think Dak said, like, look, we saw three coverages. Yeah. You know, I we're we're okay here. But um, I thought it was kick ass for Will Greer. I think that's badass. Like, it, really, the team is just protecting their se- themselves by not playing anybody who's going to be on their team. But it still feels cool that it's like, look, I know you're on your way out. Go sling it. Go kick ass. Go put on a show. And uh, and he did. He looked great. I think he's going to get a gig. He's going to be on somebody's fifty three. Because he kicked ass. I yeah. think it's fun. Yeah, you know, and my initial thoughts were, if I was Will Greer, I'd be a little bit pissed. <laughs> um, I, I would. I mean, I'm what like, would hey, you rather, What would you rather have? Not playing? No, I would be pissed at the fact that, hey, guys, my football career's on the line, and you're going to let Dak just go out here and just play Madden. Like, now, it worked out. It worked out. Dak was good at what he did, and, and he called some play. But I'm like, hey, I'll – Mike McCarthy, how about you call my plays here, buddy? Like, give me, give me some a guy with more experience. Go ahead. Okay, I just I think that um, no, that's true. Like, you're giving me Will Greer's perspective that you consider, and I would think from the team perspective, I literally don't care what you think. Like, you you're not going to be here tomorrow, and right. so like what we are doing is what a lot of teams do, which is use this last game to do something that might be viewed as kind of strange, but serves a purpose for us. Like a lot of guy, a lot of teams will have a non-head coach serve as the head coach to give him experience. And in this case, it was, hey, my quarterback, we're going to be running a new offense. I think this would be a great learning experience for you to view this thing through my eyes. Like, I want to hear what you think and what you would want here, and you call the plays. And so, like, it will serve us. And so, yeah, I guess you're right. As Will Greer, it would be like, but I want the guy who calls plays to call the plays and as the Cowboys are like, yeah, we don't care. We're just doing this to serve our our quarterback the best we can and serve our team the best we can. But you're right. From Will Greer, you probably were like, huh? But he also might have thought it was cool. Like, quarterbacks probably think they're better than the play caller at calling plays. Yeah. So when Dak was like, I'm calling the plays, Will was probably like, hell yeah, dude. And then I thought to myself, like, as the game is happening, I'm like, okay, Dak is doing well. But I'm like, I'm like, damn, Will, had you played like this before, you wouldn't be in this situation. Like, the reason you're in this situation is because you have not been doing that in practice or in other games. And you've had multiple chances at doing this. So that's a part I'm just like, you know, everyone's like, man, look at this. I'm like, no, not look at this. If Will had been doing this, and maybe he went to this game, no pressure, YOLO, F it, whatever happens, happens, I'm just going to go out here and play football. But I'm like, that should have been your approach before. Like, because if Will... Honestly, if Will Greer had been doing what he did in this game prior to and in practice, our conversation is different. Our conversation now is, is Will Greer pushing Cooper Rush out of a job? So that's why I was like, I'm like, dang, Will, I'm like, why, why would you wait till now to do this? I mean, I get, I get it, but my boy, you had a lot of chances to, to, to get this type of performance on tape and on film to get this, get this current team to keep you, but yet and still you 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 Ben Denucci yourself and out of a job, and now now you'll go play somewhere else, you know. But you were a third round pick, right? The talent is there, the the, the abilities are there. You just you just you know crap down your leg a lot and and didn't show up in these moments. And you were, you would have had a job. So I was like I was like all right, bro, like whatever. That, was, that poor guy, there was nothing he could do to make the Cowboys in that game. Like, you could have been literally perfect because he damn near was. And it was like, all right, thanks. See you later. And like on my way out, I would be thinking, are you guys sure you don't want to think about this? The deals are, I mean, at that point. Are you sure I'm not better than Cooper? <laughs> Is Cooper tradable? Can you not get anything out of this situation? Uh, but either way, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for every player that gets to play and makes their money. Go get him, Tiger. Yeah. Go enjoy being somebody's QB3. You did it. Great job. All right, Jesse, that's Believe in the Cowboys presented by our friends at Bet Online. And with all that said, I'd like to remind you that you have no idea what anyone's going through. So be cool to everyone. We love you. Be easy. Eliminate the contingencies. <laughs>